Welcome to this painting tutorial. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. In this video I decided to paint at Sangor from the Silver Tower set. I recently bought it for myself and I've enjoyed it very much. Uh, this color scheme is uh, very monochromatic. It repeats a little bit of the colors uh, throughout the color scheme. Only the details uh, are different colors. But you can change colors around as you like and uh, this is the way I decided to paint mine. If you like it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I shall start. I'm going to start by priming the model in gray. For that, I use Vallejo Surface Primer Gray through an airbrush. This is a very light color. I would recommend using a white primer or any other uh, gray that is light so that uh, we can cover with the very light colors easy. I'm going to use Celeste Gray, and I'm going to water it down, and I'm going to use that on all of the skin area of this model. Uh, be very careful to apply these colors as thin as you can and um, apply multiple coats if you need. Uh, the Celestial Gray is pretty close to the primer. It's a little bit more greenish, a little bit darker than the primer. So just make sure to uh, cover all of the skin with this color. After that, I'm going to use Sotek Green and with this color, I'm going to paint the tentacles on his head and also all of the armor parts and any other part that you want to be uh, like blue bluish green and this is the color that I used if you started before from a darker primer you might want to paint these areas first with Stegat and Scale green so that it's easier to cover but because we used a very light primer we don't need to do that next I'm going to use uh, Gilman blue and with this color I'm going to glaze all over the skin area of this model. Uh, don't be uh, shy to use it a little bit heavy because it's not gonna cover super well. It's going to be a very thin glaze and you want this to be a little bit more darker. Just, just don't let it pull but make sure that the color uh, stains the whole skin area of the model not leaving any part of it uh, the original Celestia Grey. I forgot to mention that I also painted Celestia Grey the places that are going to be white and next I'm going to shade all of the Sotek green and also the places that are going to be white and the armor of course but in the armor I'm going to try to use a uh, fine detail brush just to get into the crevices instead of shading the whole thing because I don't want to make a lot of cleanup uh, but that's pretty much it uh, try to shade all of the places that are going to be white and try to get into all of the crevices of the armor Washing is my favorite part of painting almost any model and uh, getting a very light uh, tone uh, color scheme with a glaze is uh, very fun. You can leave the color of the skin like that if you want, but I'm going to highlight it uh, further down this uh, tutorial. With Coelia Green Shade, I'm going to shade the lower part of the legs and uh, you can use any other color that you like. You can use uh, Violet if you want to paint the, the tentacles on the head on a violet color or you, if you want it pink you can use Scarborough Crimson or something else uh, but this is just to keep it consistent and to keep the skin a single color but you can do whatever you want I saw some Sangors that have these uh, areas in different colors and uh, it's fine to change them if you want with Fenrician Grey I'm going to start layering the skin leaving a little bit of the Gilliman glaze on the deepest recesses this is going to provide the shadows and this is just like a cleanup process just painting the whole skin leaving the recesses on the previous color and uh, this looks pretty good and also makes the color a little bit more even and not as patchy as is, as if you leave the glaze uh, only. Next I'm going to use blue horror and this is going to be the an edge highlight to all of the sharpest uh, places on the skin just to make them pop a little bit more. You can go even further and use white but this is the this is the where I stopped. I only used uh, the blue horror as a final highlight. And I also painted the beak on these colors, but later on I'm going to change them to a bone color like in the horns. Next with Sotek Green again, I'm going to clean up the tentacles on the head. And also you can clean up the armor if you messed up, but uh, it's just a very quick step of uh, bringing back the Sotek Green and leaving the darkest places with the shaded color. 
Uh, the armor places are very small, so I recommend using a very small brush, the smallest brush that you have. I use the fine detail brush, which is an older version of the small layer brush. But in these small areas, you need to use a very small brush and be very careful to uh, not paint on any other areas that you don't want to. Here I am using Temple Guard Blue. And with this color, I'm going to just uh, pick up highlights on these areas. Uh, being very careful to only paint the edges on the armor and the highest parts of the tentacles on the head and also the bottom of the feet. I'm just going to pick up uh, all of these um, last uh, lower parts of the feet just to bring them a little bit more closer to blue. And the last highlight for the blue-green areas is going to be Baharat Blue. And this is going to be an edge highlight and also picking the sharpest parts on the dreadlocks or tentacles on the head. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same as we did with the blue horror, but instead of uh, in the skin, we're going to use it on the blue areas on Sota Green and uh, Temple Guard Blue. These edge uh, paints are very light and they make this model look very like ghostly. And because I used uh, very similar colors, it looks like that. Next, I'm going to use Ulthuan Gray. And with this color, I'm going to clean up the white. And I'm basically just uh, bringing back uh, the color of the cloth around the model just to bring it back to white. And this is going to cover over most of these areas, just leaving a little bit of the shade on the recesses again. Once that's done, I'm going to use white, model color white from Vallejo. And with this color, I'm going to edge highlight all of the places that are going to be white. And you can use it to give extreme highlights to the skin if you want. I didn't. But if you want to spend a little bit more time, you can do that. But I'm just going to do this for this model here. Now that that's done, I'm going to use black and I'm going to base coat all of the places that are going to be black. I'm finished with the blues. Now I only have to paint all of the other areas that are different colors. I think I say this a lot, but it's very important to thin your paints so that you don't uh, cover all of the detail with very thick paint. Uh, just uh, thin it down a little bit on your palette and start using the color um, so that it flows well and it doesn't glob into big uh, piles around the model. Next, I'm going to use Lead Belcher. With this color, I'm going to paint all of the places that I want to be silver. There are not too many. It's only the blades and the chains around the belt and things like that. If you want to use any silver or in any other areas, you can use this color as well. But uh, this is a very quick step, just uh, trying to pick all of these uh, chains and blades around the model. Once that's done, I'm going to move ahead and use Retributor Armor. With this color, I'm going to paint all of the places that are going to be gold. I'm going to use a very fine detail brush, uh, the finest that I can, because uh, the detail on the armor is very fine and very thin, so you might have to take your time. Retributor Armor is a very good flowing paint, uh, so this step is uh, kind of fun for me. Uh, just make sure that it doesn't go uh, dry on your brush and just keep painting all of these gold areas. Next I'm going to use Sandry Dust and with this color I'm going to color all of the places that are going to be bone around the model. This is this includes the horns, um, the claws and if it has uh, like skulls or anything else around his belt like this one does. Uh, you can paint those as well. Next with Screamer Pink I'm going to paint all of the places that I want to be pink and these include uh, on the skin these kind of uh, feather kinds of uh, texture that it has on the shoulder and on the back and everywhere almost and I'm going to also paint the feathers on the belt just to make them a different color from the skin and the model itself and that it, they look different. Once that's done I'm going to use Drukai Violet and with this color I'm going to shade almost all of these places that I painted I'm going to shade the silver, the gold, and uh, around the eyes just to give it a little bit of a reddish like shadow to make it look more uh, like a living animal. And I'm going to also shade uh, the feathers and I think that's it. 
just real quick trying to get into all of these uh, crevices on these details here and make them a little bit more three-dimensional once that's done I'm going to move on and use Agarax Earthshade and with this color I'm going to shade uh, most of the bone areas on the model I say most because the, on the horns I don't want to shade the whole thing on all of the other places that I want to be uh, bone I can shade the whole thing but on the horns I'm only going to shade the upper parts and just about half of the horn and then let it dry and then come back and reshade the very top of the horn just to make a little bit of a transition instead of uh, getting everything the same uh, brown color it, was, it doesn't going to matter if you don't do a very good job on making this transition because we're going to highlight it and it's going to kind of fix it when we highlight next I'm going to use white and with this color I'm going to base coat all of the places that I want to do like a glowing green uh, like this sort of energy coming from uh, orbs and eyes and anything that looks like that and you can pick and choose whatever you want you can do the gems as well I did my gems with this color as well because I didn't want to go into more detail with this uh, model because it's already a long tutorial and you can do the jewels as you like but here I am shading all of these parts that I painted white with Coelia green shade again and this is going to give them the shadows and if it goes a little bit into other areas it's gonna look like a glow so it doesn't matter too much try not to do it intentionally but uh, it looks alright next with Eshin Grey I'm going to highlight all of the places that are going to be black and just a very faint highlight I didn't want to go into detail with the black as well I wanted to stay very dark I only did a little bit of a highlight on all of the most, most high places on the black Next, with Stormhost Silver, I'm going to edge highlight all of the places that are going to be silver. The chains, I'm going to pick up uh, most of the most raised parts on the chains and also all of the edges on the blades. Once that's done, I'm going to use Liberator Gold. Make sure to mix it very well. I dropped a couple of glass beads into the pot because this uh, color separates a lot and uh, make sure the, the pot is very well shaken and I'm going to pick up all of the most uh, sharpest parts of the gold it's almost all of the gold because the, most of it is very sharp and very thin uh, but just try to pick up all of the places that are more sharpest and leave the recesses on the shaded color with pink horror I'm going to start highlighting all of the places that I want to be pink the feathers and the texture on the chest and things like that just try to cover most of the area leaving a little bit of the other color on the surroundings and the uh, most deepest parts if you can say that and in the feathers I'm just going to start feathering this color to the edges and leaving a little bit of a texture like lines that look like feathers next I'm going to use Bestigor Flesh and with this color I'm going to give an extreme highlight to the pink and this is going to make it look a little bit more uh, like flesh and a little bit more bright as a pink and this is going to go into the very pointy parts on the texture of the chest and shoulders and on the very edges of the feathers once it's done I'm going to use Ushafti bone and I'm going to start highlighting the bone and with this I'm going to do individual like lines on the texture of the horns and for the other bone parts I'm going to try and paint most of the area leaving a little bit of the brown behind uh, but in the horns I did it like that you could dry brush it if you want just make sure that your dry brush is uh, very dry before you apply the paint because you can do a mess and the, the paint can go into the crevices if you're not careful next with Screaming Skull I'm going to do the same thing but uh, this time I'm just going to concentrate on the, more, on the most uh, sharpest parts and the places that are more um, bright and on the top of the model next I'm going to use Gauss Blaster Green and with this color I'm going to give an extra highlight to the places that are supposed to be glowing green like the orbs and stuff like that 
just paint a little bit of this in the very top part or the middle on of the jewels and eyes and stuff like that. Once that's done, the last thing to do is to use Flash Kids Yellow. And with this color, I'm going to color the eyes. Thankfully, these eyes are not that small. They're kind of big for uh, other miniatures that I've painted. So they're not as hard to paint. And with this color, they look pretty good. And that is the finished model. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. I've been very eager to paint more Sinch uh, miniatures because I started collecting a Sinch Demon's Army and that's the reason I bought the Silver Tower set as well. And I've been having a lot of fun playing it with friends. And I wanted to tackle more color scheme of Sinch because they have a lot of colors and they sometimes seem a little bit more challenging than normal. And I've, ha I've been having fun painting Sinch in general. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it entertaining and helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe because that really helps my channel out. Feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section below and I hope to see you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching. You stayed! Great! Thank you very much for supporting my channel and if you would like to become a patron, there is a link to my Patreon page in the description below. Your contributions help pay for my work and keeps the channel going. A single dollar a month is more than enough and you can cancel at any time. If you can't, don't worry, you can support my channel by simply watching my videos and sharing them with your friends. Thank you for watching, have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.